Lesson 5.1, page 236, Solving Systems of Linear Equations by Graphing. In this lesson, you will learn how to check solutions of systems of linear equations. You will learn how to solve systems of linear equations by graphing, which means you'll need to know slope-intercept form. We've used that here in the previous chapter again a lot. And you will solve systems of linear equations to solve le real life problems. First of all, you need to know what a system of linear equations even means. It means that it is a set of two or more linear equations in the same variable. So when you hear about a system of linear equations, it just means I have two equations or more, and those equations have the same variables in them. Here would be an example of that right here. You can see two or more equations, and each equation has the same variables. This would be called a system, or it also could be called a linear system. Okay? The solution of a system of linear equations in two variables is the ordered pair that is a solution to each equation in the system. So it has to be an ordered pair that makes both equations true. Let me give you an example. Like 1, 6 is not a solution. Here's why. If you plug 1 and 6 up here, that's true. But if you plug a 1 in here and a 6 in here, that statement is not true. So that would not be a solution to the system. A solution is an ordered pair that's true for all the equations in the system. You will be asked in homework to check if an ordered pair is a solution to a system like they are here. Let's try that. Let's check this first example. They want me to check, is the ordered pair 2, 5 a solution to the system? Well, let's check. If I plug in 2 for x and 5 for y, 2 plus 5 is definitely 7. If I plug a 2 in for x here and a 5 in for y here, I get 4 minus 15, and that's negative 11. That's true. Okay? So this is true. This ordered pair is a solution of the system because it makes both statements true. Let's try part B. Um, negative 2, 0. Is that a solution to the system? Well, let's try. If I plug negative 2 in for x and 0 in for y, I get 0 on the left, and negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. That's true. But if I plug negative 2 in for x here and 0 in for y in the second equation, I'm getting 0 on the left, and I'm getting negative 2 plus 4, which is 2. That's not true. So this ordered pair would not be a solution to the system. What I'd like you to do is stop the video and try these two. I want you to check. Is the ordered pair 1, negative 2 a solution to this system? And is the ordered pair 1, 4 a solution to that system? Pause the video and try. Here's what you should find. The first ordered pair in question 1, that's not a solution. Here's the reason. It does make the first statement true. I do get a true statement for the first equation, but in the second equation, um, I am not getting a true statement. I'm getting negative 5 on the left, but 5 on the right. That's not true. So I put ns. This is not a solution. The second equation, the first statement, when I plug in 1 for x and 4 for y, I get a true statement. In the second equation, when I plug a 1 in for x and a 4 for y, I get a true statement. So this would be a solution. Let's talk about how you solve a system of linear equations by graphing because that's the main part of this lesson, solving systems by graphing. The solution of a system of linear equations is the point of intersection of the graphs of the equation. So if you're, if you're like, wow, that's kind of wordy, here's all that's telling you. The point where the two lines cross, that would be the solution to your system. So here's how we use graphing to solve a linear system. 
you graph both equations on the same coordinate plane. You find the point where these two lines meet, and then you just quickly check it, and that's the answer to the problem. Okay? Let's do this problem on a sheet of graph paper together. We're going to solve this system, y equals negative 2x plus 5, and y equals 4x minus 1, by graphing. So I wrote the two questions down. So here's a good review of slope-intercept form. For my first equation, the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is 5. So there's my y-intercept at positive 5 and slope negative 2, down 2 over 1 each time, and there's my line. Next equation, my slope is 4, and my y-intercept is negative 1. So here's this equation. You can see my y-intercept at negative 1, and then I'm going up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1. There's that line. Do you notice this line, these two lines meet at the point 1, 3. So I think 1, 3 is the solution. Let's quickly check. If I plug 1 up here in for x and 3 in for y, I get this statement. 3 equals negative 2 plus 5, and that is 3 equals 3. That's true. Now, take 1 and plug it in for x in the second equation, 3 for y, and you get 3 equals 4 times 1 minus 1, and 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 3, and 3 does equal 3. Do you notice how this ordered pair makes both statements true? So 1, 3 is the solution to this system. Let's have you try. Why don't you pause the video, and I want you to graph both these equations and find the solution to this system. Here's what you should have done. This first equation, you notice it has a slope of a half, and it has a y-intercept of 3. So here's my first line, y-intercept at 3, and I'm going up 1 over 2 each time. There's my line. Second equation, y equals negative 3 halves x minus 5. So, y-intercept is negative 5, slope negative 3 halves. So let's apply that, y-intercept at negative 5, and I'm going down 3 over 2, down 3 over 2, and there's this line. Do you notice these two lines are meeting at the point negative 4, 1? I just got to check it real quick. If I take negative 4 and plug it in here, and I take 1 and plug it in here, and I work it out, I'm working it out over here, I'm getting 1 on the left equals negative 2 plus 3. 1 equals 1, that's true. Now plug it in the other equation. I plug negative 4 in for x, you can see here, and 1 in for y, and I'm getting negative 3 halves times negative 4 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. That's true also. This is the solution, negative 4, 1. So there's my solution to this system. Solving real-life problems. You can use graphing to solve a real-life situation. So here's a question where they say, a roofing contractor buys 30 bundles of shingles and 4 rolls of roofing paper for $1,040. A second purchase at the same price, the contractor buys eight bundles of shingles for $256, and I want to find the price per bundle of shingles and the price per roll of roofing paper. Okay, first I need to write equations. I'll call the bundles of shingles X. I don't know how many we need, or I misspoke, how much they cost, I meant to say. I don't know how much those cost, and I also don't know the cost of the roofing paper that's why. Okay, here's my first equation. 30x plus 4y had to equal 1,040. So there's one equation. Second equation, my second purchase. The contractor bought eight bundles of shingles, that's x, and you notice they bought zero bundles um, of roofing paper, or zero rolls of roofing paper. I'll just write that in here, rolls roofing paper. Okay, so here's my second equation. I have eight 
bundles of shingles, 8x, plus zero rolls of roofing paper, 0y equals 256. I need to graph these. Now, you might remember this is another graphing technique. We can use the x and y intercepts to graph. That's easy. If you plug in 0 for y, find x. There's your x-intercept. And if you plug in 0 for x, find y. So that's what I'm going to do to graph these. So I rewrote my problems here on my graph paper. Now, x is the price per bundle, and y is the price per roll. So let's find my intercepts. First of all, if I plug 0 in for y, that would cross out the y, and 30x would have to equal 1,040. And I can divide by 30. There's my x-intercept. Okay, 34 and 2 thirds. Let's get the y-intercept. If you plug a 0 in for x, I can find y. So 4y would have to equal 1,040. I can divide by 4. Okay, there's my y-intercept. Let's now go to the second equation. Um, I already know that this is 0 because I... 0 times y is nothing, so all I have to do is solve 8x equals 256. So 8x equals 256 divided by 8. Here's the equation for the second um, equation, x equals 32, that I have to graph. Okay, so let's graph, let's graph these. Now, first of all, I've got to think about my scale. The values for x I have to graph are all the way into the 30. So I, make a, I made a scale of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on, so I can fit this on my paper. Look at y. I've got to get all the way up to 260. So I made my scale 25s, 25, 50, 75, 100, and so on. Okay, let me plot these. The first line, the y-intercept's 260, so let me make that nice and big for you. It's right here. There's my y-intercept. My x-intercept is 34 and 2 thirds, which is, I'm estimating it, it's almost 35. I'm trying to make a big circle there, and I connect those. Okay, here's the next equation. x equals 32. Remember, that's just a vertical line at 32. So I'm not drawing all the way across my paper because I can't have negative price per roll, so I'm just drawing the positives. Look at where these two lines meet. They meet at the point 32, and I'm asked, it's got to be something in the low 20s. I'm not sure. I put 20-something. Here's how I can figure out exactly what it is. I know x is 32. Let's plug in 32 for x. So 30 times 32 plus 4y would equal 1,040. Let's simplify that. 30 times 32, I'm doing it real quick on my calculator, is 960 plus 4y equals 1,040. And if I subtract each side by 960, I get 4y equals 80. And I can divide by 4. y must have been 20. So this must be the point 3220. So I just answered the question now. Let me put in... 20 here. Well, I'll just write it again. 32.20. That means the bundles were $32 a piece for a bundle, okay? And the rolls were $20 a piece. So I now know what the prices were. $20 a piece for the rolls, $32 a uh, bundle for um, that. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.